Jesus loves the little children, all the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night with snow-covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. There is none so blind. Must let our thoughts be free for every hour that passes by you know the world gets a little bit colder it's time to realize that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder so everything is beautiful in its own way like the starry summer night with snow-covered winter's day. And everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. Sing that again. Everything is in its own way like a stormy summer night with snow covered winter's day everybody's beautiful in their own way under God's heaven the world's gonna find He got the whole world in his hand. 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 He got the wind and the rain in his hand. He got the wind and the rain in his hand. He got the wind and the rain in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. He got the wee small baby. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals, that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowed them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beast of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the sea, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. 
Good to hear from you this morning. I'm a has-been fill-in, as uh, we've said, Randy and all are at annual conference, becoming the sent people. I reminded, reminded Jennifer when I heard that she was moving on to another appointment after Paul stole her from us. They told me to preach about that this morning, but I said I'd already prepared something else. But after Paul Christie, that stealing, sheep-stealing preacher, had stole her from us, I said he ought to be reminded that sheep-stealing is against the discipline somewhere. Okay. I'm a, I'm a member of the Texas Annual Conference. Uh, it's been my privilege to be worshiping with you for the last 10 years since my bride and I bought a home here in Shelby Place, and uh, we have worshiped with you all these years, and it's my privilege to be with you today. So in that spirit that we've all come together this morning, I promise to get you out so you beat the Baptists for lunch. <laughs> so with that, let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you watch the Olympics? Anybody Olympics fan? I love the Olympics. I love the summer Olympics. I love the winter. I love the Olympics. I love watching young men, mostly young men and women, whose bodies are toned and trimmed and are, are, have been disciplined over the years in their various crafts and their various sporting pro, uh, programs. And they come to that event with one thing in mind, and that is gold. Nobody wants bronze. <laughs> who knows who won bronze? Nobody knows who won silver. Nobody won silver, but we know who won gold. We are always impressed with men and women who come together and with great discipline, they, they are competitive and they achieve to be number one in their sport on that day. And in that moment, in that crystallizing, clarifying moment, they win gold. Psalm 8 says, you have won gold. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou dost care for him? But you have made him greater than all. You have made him just a little less than the angels, and have given them dominion over all the earth. Wow! You are special, says Psalm 8. Now, it's hard to believe that someday when you're washing your clothes, you know, and going about the daily activities of life. But Psalm 8 reminds us that God has created you for gold. Wow. We are God's special creation. In this psalm, the psalmist says, God has created you uniquely and has made you just a little less than the angels. Now, I don't know what it means to be a little less than the angels because the only angel I met is my wife, and she's not here today. She went to the 830 service so she could go home and fix me lunch. <laughs> ah, she's an angel, I'm here to tell you. I don't know what it means to be just a little less than the angels, but the psalmist has declared that we have won gold. And I think the psalmist wants us to hear three things this morning. I'm going to tell them to you so you know when to get out. The first one is the sacred self. The second one is the sacred other. And the third is the sacred dominion. What is man that thou art mindful of him and you have created the man a little less than the angels, the sacred self has been planted in each of us. Repeat after me, the you in you. The you. Sound pretty good. The you in you. The you. you. God has given us the you, what I call the you in you. 
Now, it's not what most people see. The you and you is that place that is within us where only you and God can reside. It's that place that knows all of our fears. It knows all of our hopes. It knows all of our dreams. It knows all of our prejudices. It knows all of our sins. It knows us. It is the you in you that we carry around in all of us. And we keep it hidden because we don't know exactly what to do with it. Because we keep struggling as human beings and creatures of God to figure out what that you and you continues to evolve as we grow. But what it does mean, I think, is the sacred self that lives within each one of us. And it's a precious thing. It's God's gift to each of us that comes to us with our talents and lives within our systems and helps us to understand and celebrate our lives. That special place that God has given us, the you in you. And what does that mean? If there is a sacred place, sorry about that, if there's a sacred place in all of us that is precious to God and that everyone has that you in you, what does that mean? means that bullying, sexual harassment, racial prejudice, arguments about politics, arguments about sexuality, arguments about immigrants, etc., can become weapons to hurt the you in you. Now, you may ask, how is it that God could love all of us this uniquely? How is it that God could possibly have everyone be that same you and you without discrimination, without prejudice? And I have an example I want to share with you. All of you who are grandparents, how many grandparents do we have here? Okay. All of you who are grandparents who have the world's greatest grandchildren... <laughs> Please stand up. <laughs> wow. Now, I want to show you a picture that shows you that you're wrong. <laughs> These are the four greatest grandchildren. There's a, there's a let's see, Devin Reese is in red. She just graduated from high school and is going to college in London. And then uh, Pilot Eagle, the, the long-haired blonde boy up there, you can tell he's from Manhattan, okay? And, and he's, I think, in the eighth grade now. And then there's Jada Quinn Roberts. She's a sweetheart. She's 14. And then the boy who looks just like I did when I was that age, Ever Reverend Jones. Because they decided that, that, that her dad didn't have any heirs, so they decided to name one boy a Roberts and one boy a Jones. They're going to have to figure that out when they grow up, you know? Now, children, right, children, we recognize that children have to be judged and encouraged to grow and change, right? That's our job as parents. We need to do that. We judge those little girls and boys that we raise, and we say, you need to behave a little better. You need to go back to school. You need to do all these wonderful good things. But when it comes to grandbabies, there is no discrimination. In grandbabies, there's nothing to distinguish them. Every grandchild is the world's greatest grandchild. Now, preachers have been telling you for years a lie. They've been telling you that you are a child of God. I'm here to tell you that's wrong. You are a grandchild of God. There is no discrimination in God's love. 
for every one of you in this room today. Regardless of who you are, regardless of your politics, regardless of your perspective on any issue that is political or sexual or any of the other things that we tend to move our worries about, what God proclaims to us is that we are sacred selves. And that sacred self, like God's grandchildren, there is no distinction between any of us. And God loves us just that way. The gospel of Jesus Christ for you today is that there is no discrimination in God's love for you or anybody that you know, even your mother-in-law. I'm kidding about our mothers in law The sacred self, the you in you is precious and unique and we are the grandchildren of God. And then there's the sacred other. You ever go to a family reunion? Family, like, who goes to a family? Seriously, how many of you go to a family? Okay, we've got a lot of family reunion people. You know, and believe it or not, when you get there, you find out that they still like one another, which is usually a miracle in and of itself, right? But what, is, what do you learn about grand, when you go to a family reunion? What happens at a family reunion? Look at there, there's Don Lee. He's that preacher boy from Florida and from Texas, and he's L.L. and Gracie's son. L look at Devin Reese Roberts. That, that, that girl is Gogo and Grandma and Grandpa's grandbaby. Uh, look, at, look, at the, look at that baby over there. That's Elizabeth Little's grandchild. For at family reunions... We are known by what? Whose we are. Not who we are. We're known by whose we are. And not who we are. Worship is when the family of God comes in a family reunion today. And yeah, we're known by our name tags. Thanks, God. <laughs> But what we're really known for is whose we are. And whose we are is we are the children, the grandchildren of the God of Jesus Christ who loves us uniquely and wonderfully well. Wow. We are called in that moment as we come to worship to become the sacred other for others. That's why you're here. Music's not bad. That's one good reason to be here. The food is great. That's another reason to be here. But the real reason we're here is because of whose we are. The children and the grandchildren of God. Now, growing up, is a concept created by mothers so that children will leave home. <laughs> right? I remember at the end of my freshman year, and I was still at home driving back and forth to college, and I was now 18 years old, or pushing, starting to push 19 years old, and the, the second semester ended, and I'm having a good time, and I'm chasing women and doing all the things you're supposed to be doing in college. Yeah, preachers chase women. It's a good thing. You know, we learned this loving your neighbor is a pretty good idea at college, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're doing all that kind of good stuff. We're having a great time. And my mother comes to me and says, Donnelly, don't you think a, an experience of living in the dorm this summer would be good for you? And I was the fourth of six kids. And my mother was saying to me, and it don't know me, was get out of my house. Grow up and get on with your life. The truth of the matter is, we Methodists know that you never grow up. We become the sacred others for others by continuing to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the love of Jesus Christ through our experience of worship and Christian education and Christian service into the community for others. We become the sacred other for others. Wesley called it 
going on to perfection. I like to think of it as growing on to perfection. I'm 75 years old. I hope to God I continue to grow in grace and knowledge of the love of Christ and that I'm a different creature today than I was yesterday and I'll be a different creature through the love of God in Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, like this young man will do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I'm not sure about this preacher. <laughs> sacred self, sacred others. Last but not least, a sacred dominion. Psalm 8 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou dost care for him, but you have made him a little greater, a little better than the, a little less than the angels and have crowned them with glory and honor and have given them dominion over all things, relationships, and this thing called spaceship earth. There are no victims in the Christian community. We can no longer sit around and we can never go around and go, well, it's not my job, this problem with drugs and opioids, I can't do anything about that. Kids shooting at you with a gun, I can't do anything about that. Crazy police officers go and kill people, we can't do anything about that. We can't do anything about poverty and crime and all the other good things today, can't do anything about that. Jesus says, I don't think that's right. Jesus says, you've got to love your neighbor. And loving your neighbor doesn't mean ignoring the peace person on this side of the house and that side of the house and the three across the other. What that really means is that your job is to love that neighbor by having them over for coffee and tea and just letting them know that you care about them. Do you know your neighbors? You live in a condominium somewhere? Do you know the people living on either side and across the way? If you're a Methodist, you do. Right? If you're a Methodist, you do. Because we let other people pray about it. But Methodists have always been the people marked by two things. Vital piety. A real personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And getting off of our backsides. And doing something about it. The largest set of education, college educations in the state of North Carolina at the turn of the 18th to the 19th, 20th century was what? Methodist colleges. Why? Because the state had abrogated its responsibility to train our children. And those preachers and those Methodists like you sitting in a, in a congregation said, we've got to train our babies. And they created all these Methodist schools across all of North Carolina and South Carolina and Texas, et cetera. Hospitals were created. Children's homes were created. Homes for unwed mothers were created. All of the kind of things that Methodists are really good at. We were doing it. Vital piety and social concern. And the psalmist has said, I have, you have a sacred dominion for relationships with one another and for this place called Spaceship Earth, called Paradise. Now, dominion has two understandings. One of them is, I'm in charge. I have dominion over you. But I don't think that's what the psalmist is saying. What the psalmist is saying is that when you have dominion, your job is to be nurturing and caring for. And we have a sacred dominion as Christian men and women to take care of the relationships with one another. Sometimes it's the most maddening thing you'll ever do in your life. I've got a brother-in-law like that I could kill on a regular basis. And I pray to the Lord that I won't do that. He really is a good guy. But his politics are way, way different than mine. And I recognize that in the end that really doesn't matter because what really matters is that we are brothers in Christ. Even though he's an idiot. <laughs> what can I tell you? Sacred self, the you and you, that special place that's in you that God loves so uniquely that you are God's grandbaby. Wow. No distinction. My sainted grandmother had 10 children and 60 grandchildren. We are a productive bunch of Methodists, I'm telling you. <laughs> Think about that. 
My grandmother had to, you know, figure out how to arrange with 60 grandbabies, and everybody got a dollar a year from us. That was the way she acknowledged us and let us know. And my guess that $60 was a lot of money when she was getting $41 a month from Social Security. That was a lot of money. A month and a half, six weeks of her annual income went to pay a howdy to her grandchildren. Wow. God loves you just that way. And you need to own that. And you need to know that. And those days when it's not a good day, read Psalm 8. and Be reminded how special you are. And then remind that you are a sacred other for others. Your job is to move away and from you to others. That is what we do as Christian men and women. And last but not least, you have a sacred dominion responsibility for one another. And it doesn't matter what their politics is. It doesn't matter what their religion is. It just doesn't matter anything except that you and I are called by God to love one another in ways that ennobles them and ennobles ourselves in so doing. We have won the gold. We are all gold champions because of the love of God through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. Well, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river.